In this video, we're going to talk about the reaction between an alkane and bromine in the presence of water. So this reaction is going to produce a product known as a halohydrin, but for this example, more specifically, a bromohydrin. Now there's two carbons that are of interest in this reaction, the primary carbon of the double bond and the secondary carbon of the double bond. What you need to know is that this reaction is regioselective. We're going to get a hydroxyl group on the more substituted secondary carbon, and the bromine atom is going to go on the less substituted primary carbon. So that's going to be the product for this reaction. It's a halohydrin. Now, in terms of stereochemistry, this carbon is not chiral, so we don't have to worry about it. However, this carbon is chiral, so we can get a mixture of stereoisomers. Now, let's talk about the mechanism for this reaction. The first thing that happens in this electrophilic addition reaction is that the alkene is going to behave as a nucleophile. It's going to attack the bromine atom, expelling the other bromine atom, and this bromine will attack the primary carbon. So we're going to get a cyclic intermediate that looks like this. The bromine atom at this point has a positive formal charge. Now water is going to act as a nucleophile and it's not going to attack the more accessible primary carbon, but it's going to attack the secondary carbon. The reason being is that secondary carbon has considerable partial positive charge because if you draw the resonance structure, you can get a secondary carbocation. So even though the primary carbon is more accessible towards a nucleophilic attack, the positive charge on the secondary carbon draws the nucleophile towards itself. And so that's why water prefers to attack the secondary carbon. So when this happens, we're going to, let's change this. We're going to get this intermediate for now. And then we're going to have the water molecule here. And the oxygen is going to have a partial positive charge. Now, what we need to do is use another water molecule to act as a weak base and abstract this proton. And this will give us the halohydrin product which contains an, a hydroxyl group and a bromine atom. So that's the mechanism for this reaction. But let's talk about some other examples. So let's say we have one methyl cyclohexene and we're gonna react it with bromine in the presence of water. What's gonna be the major product of this reaction? Feel free to pause the video if you wanna try it. Now we need to focus on the carbon atoms that are part of the double bond. We have a secondary carbon and a tertiary carbon. The question is, where should we put the hydroxyl group and where should we put the bromine atom? The hydroxyl group is gonna go on the more substituted double bonded carbon atom. So it's gonna go on a tertiary carbon. The bromine is gonna go on the secondary carbon. Now, for this particular molecule, stereochemistry is important. This reaction proceeds with anti-addition. That means that the OH and the bromine atom are on opposite sides. So if you place the OH group on the front, the bromine atom will be in the back. And then that's not the only product that we can get. We can also get the enantiomer where the OH group is placed in the back and the bromine group is placed in the front. So as you can see, we get a mixture of products for this particular reaction. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to draw the products of the reaction with an alkene and bromine in water. You also know the stereochemistry behind this reaction. And you're also familiar with the mechanism that can lead you to draw the correct product. 
So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be educational. And thanks for watching.